Welcome to the Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Fit, the all-in-one AI-powered corporate wellness platform developed by Vantage Circle. Mental wellness is one of the biggest trends today. In fact, it is seen that focusing on mental well-being has increased productivity and stability. Especially with COVID in the scene, companies have also moved towards holistic goals and mental wellness. So we'll talk more about this topic in today's podcast. I am your host, Dipshi Bhattacharji, and today I have with me Namrata Jain. Besides being a TEDx speaker and a psychologist, Namrata is an aspiring author writing her book on building a relationship with nine important jewels for a better well-being. She has been featured on the cover of Brand India magazine, Healthcare Edition, and has been awarded as the most promising counselor and psychologist of the year 2018. She holds a vast experience as a psychologist and mental health professional at some renowned institutions and organizations. Her expertise lies in understanding the human mind, body, and spirit through which she guides her clients to live a more balanced, healthy, and spiritual lifestyle. She caters to clients with depression, anxiety, relationship issues, addiction, and work-life stress. Welcome to the show, Namrata. Thank you so much, Deepchi. It's a pleasure being here. Okay, uh, we are really glad to have you here. So, let us move towards our first question, which is, tell us about your journey as a mental health professional. Alright, so it's been a long journey for me so far. I started when I was 13 years old. I came across a book which was on psychology. And that's what intrigued me on understanding human mind and behavior. And since then, uh, here I am speaking to you more about mental wellness uh, and mental health overall. Uh, It's been a journey where um, I did my master's. I finished my master's. I started working with children to begin with. Uh, Realized with time that I want to work more with adults than with children. I still continue to keep that side alive of working with children by coming up with curriculums for children. But at the same time, I directly don't work with children. And then I came across with the United Health Group company, which was into mental health. And that's where I entered into the corporate organizations. And since then, I've seen uh, a journey which has only been more and more uh, exciting because it helps us make a difference to people's lives. Uh, To begin with, uh, you know, starting with one, two, three organizations. And today it's come down to I've been associated so far with 150 plus organizations doing workshops for them, uh, having done uh, multiple one on one sessions for them, retreats for them. Uh, Also worked with Johnson & Johnson for about three years as a life coach and a wellness consultant for them. Uh, So yeah, it's been an exciting journey so far. Okay. Yeah, so like you mentioned, like you have also worked with children, right? So uh, like, like, have you noticed any difference between like, uh, when you when you talk about mental wellness? So have you noticed any difference between adults and children in terms of that? So uh, what I feel is that when it comes to children, because their mind hasn't been trained a lot, uh, it's a lot of times easier to help them mold their thought processes and work on their patterns at a very younger age versus with adults, of course, because we've been we've lived for so many years now. Uh, our patterns have become more and more stronger. Our belief systems have gone more and more stronger. Uh, it takes a little effort to really make those changes and put them into application. Uh, also, the number of responsibilities that we have as adults, uh, you know, makes it lesser, uh, lesser easy for us or it makes it basically more difficult for us to give importance to our own self because we are on a daily basis actually living up to our responsibilities more than anything. So, um, yeah, with children, it's it's a more precautious way uh, than with adults, which we are making an attempt as professionals and as an organization to try and bring it to a more precautious way of living for adults as well now. And uh, like when we talk about mental health, so do you think uh, like how much prominence does mental health have in today's world? So uh, knowing that, okay, so let me start this, you know, from a very uh, young time when 2010 to 12 that was a time when there was a lot of competition between organizations on the sales that they're doing, right? So it was more sale driven. Which company is 
doing more sales is what was the focus of the organization and the focus wasn't about how well are the employees doing in the organization uh i'll give you an example like pepsico and coca cola right there was a crazy amount of competition at that time cutthroat and fast paced environments that were built at that time and the, and what would more happen is because it was sale driven the amount of stress burnout in these would go through was really really high but with time what has happened is that because uh now it's more employee driven than just sale driven organizations have actually started focusing on well-being of employees because in turn it increases productivity is what they've realized so now organizations have become far more open to have wellness programs mental health driven programs for their employees a lot more than i have seen in the 9 years of this uh, in fact i think especially with covid happening like uh, like in the entire world shifted to work from home right and with work from home many people have gotten into situations of like anxiety depression so i think that ha- that is the reason like mental health has gained a lot of recognition in today's world don't you think right right absolutely i missed to that point so um, with covid now so I, i'll tell you what happened in my journey with corporates uh, pre covid and post covid now uh, it was like pre covid we had uh organizations come to us to say with a 4% to 5% of usage of facilities related to mental health so employee counseling would happen and there was hardly a usage of 4 to 5% but from the time covid actually struck it started increasing so much so that today we have 20 to 25% of the employee strength seeking help which is an which is such a lot of um you know hike in the usage which we did not really imagine that would happen but i think covid made it so much more evident that you must seek help people knew they shouldn't uh, they should but they were shy to do so but when covid came in more and more awareness started happening people started actually being able to see their anxiety and depression surface at a level where it was so evident that they wanted to seek help then so covid though brought in a lot of difficulties for people at large but it also opened doors for people to now open up and seek help when they really really need to like uh, earlier the topic of uh, like uh, mental health was kind of a stigma right there was a stigma attached to it that if someone is uh, like mentally unstable or dealing with mental healthy shoes they were considered more of a, as crazy or mad but i think these days the entire situation has changed people are now acknowledging this the problem like if they are dealing with struggling with work based stress or whatever it is so they know they are going through a kind of situation and they are acknowledging it absolutely absolutely earlier it was just like you rightly said said you know it was more about and in india they would say right ke pagal generally psychologist ya psychiatrist ke pas jate hain you know and but i also i also feel that bollywood actually put it out a lot here uh, in india bollywood played a very important role i think also our population is quite influenced by bollywood right so yeah, exactly. uh, when when we saw a lot of actors actually voicing it out and talking about it and you know we also saw some of them committing suicide through the pandemic because of the difficult times that they were going through and yeah. they could not seek help yeah exactly especially with the sushant singh rajput case i think the yes. like yeah. entire like country have come to realize that yeah people can actually go through depression and then which can lead them to commit suicide yeah exactly so so the i think bollywood has also played a very important role in this of us becoming more and more aware um, and being able to really seek help yeah so like talking about like wellness so uh, physical ha- i like i believe like and i think it's very true that physical health and mental health are too related don't you think they are too related they are absolutely they are they are like brother and sister for that matters because uh, you know if if you are mentally healthy it impacts your physical health and if you're not physically healthy it impacts your mental health in return it is a mind body connection which cannot be taken 
as two separate things we've always been uh, you know as a uh, as a human race we've always focused a lot on our physical health because illnesses started stepping up a lot more earlier at a physical level they didn't know that the core of it is uh, you know related to the mental well-being of a person but with research and with time even professionals like doctors have started putting forth to patients saying that please focus on your stress levels uh please work on them create a lifestyle so your stress levels are a little low so that you do not get diseases like the ones you're getting uh you know in my practice also deepshi i've seen that a lot of clients through the whole pandemic they have gone through a lot of stress right and it's funny that in the last 2 3 months i've had like i've known these clients they've had an amazing life before and just through the pandemic the amount of stress they have taken at a personal level and at a professional level it has turned into major illnesses for them and they've lived healthy lifestyles as well so it's it's unfortunate that the amount of stress and anxiety that covid also brought in has brought bigger illnesses for people and at the core of it is stress and emotional turmoil that they have gone through so our body is uh, our body is basically a space where our stress levels and our mental ill mental health if it's on the if it's on the downline it actually manifests in the body eventually yeah and uh, like as a result like these days we have been like we've we are seeing that mental health is one of the trending topics today so like when we talk about mental health trends what are the like trends which we can try in 2022 for example yeah okay at an individual level i think um, you know the fact that mental health in today's world has become very very important and you know people have started talking about it uh what's important is for you to get into the precautious way of handling your mental health the trend should move towards precautious measures and not curative measures only curative measures are needed because there are a lot of people who are already suffering and you need to give them the help that they require but at the same time if you're somebody who has farly been able to handle your stress levels and been able to handle your health at a mental and emotional level it's time for you to get into the precautious lifestyle now simple things like you know you having your me time you focusing on loving yourself while you spread love to others you focusing on going for retreats when you really really have to take your time out from your work spaces even organizations for that matter should create more and more retreats for uh, you know employees because like we have a holiday break that we do uh, it's important to give them that two days or you know in 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 a lot of organizations employees are told to go for vipassana time and again right uh, vipassana is 10 days sometimes you may not be able to take out 10 days but have at least 2 to 3 days of retreats that you plan for the organizations even at an individual level if your organization is not planning it please go ahead and you know take that break focus on yourself learn to unlearn those patterns that you formed those belief systems that you've created because they actually create illnesses in the long run they create the stress and the stress creates the illness so you got to make sure that you move in that direction uh organizations need to start having more awareness programs uh give services which are one on one remember group programs are brilliant a lot of organizations are doing it we have a filled in calendar all the time from organizations of the work that they want to do we provide them with new topics that we feel are important for people to start uh becoming aware of and followed with that uh i also feel a one on one counseling or coaching is very very important for people you know so those are the trends that it really has to move into uh which is important we know that social media has taken up a lot of our lives you know uh deepchi it's it's funny but i have clients who when i ask them a very simple question that you know when you wake up what is the first thing that you do that you do you know and so far out of 100 clients say for example 99 people tell me this that the first thing that i do is i look at my phone 
I think it's the same even with me if you ask me. <laughs> so the talking I, and I won't say that I was not a part of this circle as well you know I was a part of this circle uh, a little before pandemic because pandemic just made it so evident that our lifestyle needs to change mm-hmm. you know before that we were still busy with work and we didn't know uh that you know social media was taking over so much all of a sudden but uh, i think through the whole covid times because social media has gotten so active and the virtual world is so much a part of our lives now comparatively we need to make sure that we curb that down you know so a very simple exercise for you guys to do is to not use your phone for 30 minutes once you wake up and 30 minutes before you sleep you know this very simple thing that i realized through the pandemic changed so much of the mental state that you will be in because that 30 minutes is the time when your subconscious is the most active and we all know that the subconscious is far more powerful than the conscious mind so whatever you're actually feeding into your subconscious is going to then start growing inside got to be a little conscious Uh, social media most often brings in a lot of comparison, a lot of a lot of learning as well. I'm not denying that, but a lot of comparison, conflict, competition. Sometimes us feeling bad that you know someone else's life is so much better than mine, and that then starts growing in, which leads to low self esteem, low confidence, which leads to us, uh, you know, moving into self doubt, and then of course it impacts all areas of our lives. So you know, a very simple. a ritual which is not using your phone early in the morning and late in the night can make so much of a difference i would want you as listeners to really really if you can practice this one thing i think you will see a big change in your life happening as you move forward that's a very good point actually and like oh, when you said uh, about one to one counseling so i think uh, like one to one counseling helps the introverts a lot as well right since they have this thing they cannot just open up to anyone right so when there's one to one counseling so they can actually say talk about their problems freely what do you have to say about that absolutely i think that's very rightly said uh, deepchi that um, one on one counseling is very essential right at a group level when we talk about things we are doing workshops we are doing webinars at that time you just become aware about it maybe or sometimes you also need somebody to help you introspect but what do you do after that how do you deal with it how do you work on it what needs to be done these are not things that people openly feel like talking about in groups and in india i think there is a certain level of stigma that we are still dealing with it's gone far better than what it used to be in 2005 say for example but today even now people prefer talking about it in you know private than actually talking about it openly in front of a group i have so many clients who you know come to me and they do not want people to know that they come and that's particularly one of the reasons when i decided to you know start my clinic at a bigger level which i did you know post the pandemic we again shifted it and then i realized that i need to take my clinic in a space where people are comfortable coming in it cannot be on a main road where everybody is moving around and people see them uh people are still secretive about it people like to you know come at their own convenience not letting people know about it even in organizations say for example we do have counselors placed in organizations who go for one on one counseling there and it's brilliant because a lot of people have started accepting it and they do seek help within the office but we also provide a service where they can come to the clinic and take sessions where the organization has no idea who is coming in we just have a, we maintain that confidentiality to its key uh, we make sure that we do not bring out any information of why they are actually coming to us because they want to keep it uh, you know confidential and not reveal it to anybody for now and it's fine right we can respect a person's privacy There are some people who are extroverts and who like to voice out because they feel that that's going to have more people open up. On the other hand, we also have people like ambiverts or introverts who prefer keeping it by themselves. Uh, they want to build on their esteem so much to then be able to openly talk about it. Okay, so now now when we talk about like corporates, so can you elaborate on how corporates can actually encourage this mental health trends? Hmm. 
so um i think when it comes to corporates it's the leaders who need to step up uh if the leaders are people who talk about it you will see that the organization in itself talks about it right uh what i also feel is that and which is brilliant i see that happening in a lot of organizations say for example nike had started this where they have a separate room where people can go and meditate uh we have google that has a lot of facilities like they have sleeping pods in their offices uh we also have uh, say for example certain organizations that have created a culture uh where people have sports happening within the organization they have games within uh their premises which also helps them de stress right so organizations at a larger level need to create a culture first and the culture needs to be initiated by the leaders when the leaders start becoming a part of this culture the employees automatically start voicing it out right they look up to, it's 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 like i i like to give this analogy which is you know when you're a child you look at your parents they are your role models right and you learn from them similarly when a person enters an organization the leaders are people who they look up to they are their role models to a certain level and it's very important for leaders to make sure that they are uh, you know bringing in that culture for the employees but that does not uh, take away the fact that every employee in himself or in herself is a leader and must take that responsibility themselves you must go out there and talk about it yourself you never know who's listening and it encourages them also to become a part of it for them also to talk about it uh have a lot more awareness programs firstly because people yet are not aware of what anxiety is what depression is when do they need to seek help how does the mind really work and how is it that we create all of this in our lives to come in right it happens at a very root level which i think most people are not aware of uh and i think a little more awareness on that lines would really really help so awareness programs followed with a lot of campaigns we've been doing a lot of campaigns for organizations which have brought in a lot more participation for them to talk about things uh a few support groups i think support groups work brilliant i run support groups for the geriatric population and it is so amazing they are such an amazing audience to talk to firstly and they respond so well i think we need to create those communities within our organization for different age groups sometimes even age groups are important the millennials would want to talk to millennials because millennials understand it much better yes, there is a slight yes. innovation difference right mm, yes. and then of course when we have people who are in their 40s they have a different mindset people in their 50s have a different mindset because the generation gap today is hardly 2 3 years you know in 2 3 years there's so much shift happening that people are unable to connect earlier generation gap used to be 10 years now i would say it's about 3 to 5 and yes. that also is a lot you know it sometimes it's just 2 years also can be a gap between siblings so um i think it's important for us to have communities within the organization where people are able to talk people are able to bond with each other open up and help each other because the only reason being because when people are happy you will see productivity increases a lot in india unfortunately we work for 8 hours to 12 hours in a lot of other countries people work for 6 hours and yet the productivity is so high i think it is because the culture that is being created where people are given more importance than just the sales that people are doing and when people are given more importance i think the productivity that the organization or the leaders are looking for automatically comes in they are more like willing to and more motivated i think to work at their best like invest in your people for people to invest in your organization uh, yeah it's both way good yeah so yeah so with this we almost come to the end of the session so uh so i would like to ask you really like to share something with our listeners like definitely uh whenever given a chance i'm willing to talk to people i i really really encourage you to go speak to somebody who you feel the most comfortable with remember that this could be a loved one 
this could be somebody who you have known for years together somebody who you look up to this could be a mentor of yours and if you feel that there is nobody around seek help from a professional who is unknown who's going to be absolutely objective towards you and that's what you really need when you're in your down times right in our up times we are of course very very happy we are enjoying life with everybody and everybody is uh, you know in a positive space for us but in our down times it's very few people that we are we can go up to and we feel like we we'll, we'll be able to open up it's important for you to find your safe space that is your responsibility once you find your safe space i'm sure and if you find the right person to in that safe space for you i'm sure you'll get your help and you'll be able to become a much more powerful individual who can do so much more in life and if at at any point you need help just remember we are always here for you while i'm an individual and a professional i have a community of thousands of psychologists all over india and across the globe with me i'm not saying associated with me but overall because i take this as a family of professionals across the globe who are right there sitting to give that hand to you to bring you out of that dark hole that some of us keep getting into time and again it does come to almost like research says that it comes to almost everybody at one point in their lives remember that you can always just hold somebody's hand and come out of that dark hole i have personally been through depression and i know how it feels right and it's funny that people say that you know as a professional how can you go through it but unfortunately this is an illness where we don't always know the cause of it it just happens you don't know what actually made it happen it just happens and once it happens all you need to do is to seek help and get yourself out of that dark hole me going through this myself has helped me become a far more empathetic professional and i'm so proud of that sailing through it i know how it feels to be there and i know that you can come out of it if i could i'm sure you can too so remember that i'm always there because i care that's very inspiring like whatever you guys do it's very inspiring so thank you so much namrata for joining us here today so uh, like if our listeners want to reach you how would they be able to sure so if you would like to reach to me you can definitely connect with me on linkedin uh, my handle is namrata jain psychologist if you type you will find me on top there uh, if you wish to connect with me on instagram you can follow me on namrata jain official uh if you would like to connect with me uh directly otherwise you can connect with me on my website which is www.namritajain.in uh my contact details are given there please feel free to approach thank you so much great talking to you namrata thanks a lot for your time and this entire session was very insightful to me as well i'm sure for our listeners as well so thank you again thank you dipshi thank you for being such an amazing host Uh, it was a great pleasure to chat with you. Thanks a lot. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Thanks for listening to Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage Fit Corporate Wellness Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.